At this point in time of your Python career, you probably have already worked with a lot of try and accept blocks. And in this video, I want to go over some of the hidden functionality of the try and the accept block. And to demonstrate this, I went ahead and created a function called divide, which divides A by B and returns a string. And of course, it tries to do that. And if the user divides by zero, we get a zero division error. Otherwise, we get a type error if they enter some sort of letter. And we can actually test this out just by running the program. So 10 divided by 4 is going to give us 2.5. Instead, if we try to divide it by A, we're going to get the value error handled. And if we divide it by 0, we're going to get the zero exception handled. So until now, that's all very common Python code. But what I want to cover now is that we have some extra keywords that we can provide to try and accept. And one of them that might not seem so intuitive is the else block on a try and accept block. So what happens here is if the code runs successfully, everything in the else block will be executed. So here we can say successfully calculated. And this will always run if the code doesn't run into exceptions. So now that we divided 10 by 4 again and actually got a response, you can see that we get the successfully calculated print statement which came from the else block because everything in the try block executed correctly. And if we go ahead and replace this with zero, we're not going to get that success message anymore. So that's something neat to keep into account when you're working with try and accept is that you can have a block that only runs when everything's successfully executed. And another keyword you should keep into account is the finally keyword. And this runs no matter what happens. If something goes wrong, if something goes good, this will always run. So if you go ahead and type in something here, you can say this will always run. You will see that even if we divide by zero, this will always be run. And as you can see, these are very powerful. You can add a lot of functionality to your try and accept blocks because now you have these two added keywords that really make your program flexible. But anyways, guys, that's actually all I wanted to cover in this lesson, just going over that you can add else and finally to your try and accept. And I think that's a really cool feature. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.